Hey guys, Hackisploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get good with Tmux because uh, a lot of the feedback I received from the previous video where I actually covered how to use Tmux uh, to a basic level uh, were, you know, really requesting me to actually make a follow up video where I cover everything you need to know to be uh, competent or proficient with Tmux and to get the job done, so to say. Um, so this video is going to be focused around that. I'll be covering everything that I think is important. And of course, after that, uh, you, you will be in a point where you can actually use uh, Tmux uh, comfortably. But if you want to do anything else, uh, you can definitely check how to do that on your own. Uh, this video is focused on the essentials. All right. So first of all, I'm, I'm going to talk about sessions. All right. So bear with me as I create our first session. The first thing you want to do uh, before you do anything else is if you're running this on Parrot OS or Kali Linux, you need to make sure you have Tmux installed. So again, you can use your aptitude package manager. So sudo apt install and I'm going to Tmux. Now I already have Tmux installed, so I really don't need to worry about that. And um, for the uh, for the duration of this video, I'm going to be using a utility called screen key so that you guys can actually see what I'm going to be typing. So I'll just disable that for now. Uh, the first thing we want to do when we want to create a new session, and I'm not going to give it a name or anything, we just want to get into Tmux, is we type in Tmux, right? And now that we're in Tmux, again, you're going to get the highlighted green bar at the bottom that gives you all your open windows. Now, in our case, we only have uh, one window, which is uh, labeled from zero all the way to as many windows as you want. That's something to take into consideration, is that the window labeling starts from zero and it moves on uh, forward uh, uh, numerically. Uh, you then have the the name of the window which you can actually assign and I'll get to that in a second and the asterisk actually sp specifies uh, what window is selected so if you create more than one window you can actually move uh, between them you know so that would, would make that a very uh, good um, indicator of what window you're on. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is let me just enable a uh, screen key and uh, let's talk about uh, new panes and um, how to create them and then how to switch between panes. So panes are slightly different, right? So if you have ever used uh, something like Terminator, you know that you can split your terminal window into two sides, into four sides, as many sides or as many panes as you want. And you can perform multiple tasks within those panes within the same window. All right, so it's not uh, it's not quite the same as opening another window. All right, so the first thing we want to do to create a new pane, we hit uh, Control B and we use the percentage sign, right, or the percentage symbol, right, and of course that is done by invoking the Shift key, and as you can see that creates a new pane onto our right. Now, if you want to switch between the panes, we type in Control B and we use the uh, your navigational keys or your directional keys. So in, our, in my case, if I wanted to move to the left, I would use Control B and left. If I wanted to move to the right, uh, so on and so forth. You get the idea. It's quite intuitive. So again, I can hit Control B and I want to go to the left. And let's say I want to run HTOP here. I can run HTOP there. If I want to go to the next one, the next pane, I can do that as well. And I can do essentially all that I want here. Right, so there's tons of stuff that I can, uh, you, there's tons of stuff you can do within two panes. And of course, if you want to create a new one, we can do that as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, Control B, but in, instead of creating a third pane, a third vertical pane to my right, I'm going to create a, uh, a pane on my bottom of the second pane right over here, the one that I'm currently active in here. So what I'll do is uh, let me just hit Control B. And we're going to use the quotation mark and that creates a pane at the bottom as opposed to one on your right that stands vertically. Um, so you can see you can create as many as you want. Um, so I can create another one at the bottom here and you get the idea. It's fairly simple to understand what panes are. So again, if I want to exit, I just hit exit in the ones that I want to close down. So I can say exit. And uh, if I want to go to the next one, I can get into that and, it, and then just hit um, exit like so. And that closes out the panes for me. So that is creating panes. It's very, very simple. Use control and B. And uh, of course, you then use the percentage sign or the percentage symbol to create a vertical pane. Uh, and if you want to create a horizontal pane, you use the uh, quotation mark. So that's control B and the quotation marks. All right. Uh, now, if let's talk about windows. All right. So windows are, you can think of them as entirely new windows where you can do whatever you want and you can sort them 
in regards to the task that you're trying to achieve in each of them, right? And in each of them, you can create a, as many panes as you want. So you really have a lot uh, that you can do in terms of multitasking here. So in, in our case, let's create a new window. We do that by typing in control B and C, and that creates a new window. And as you can see, uh, the new window is going to be labeled uh, after zero as one. That makes logical sense, right? And it's going to have a name as bash. And that's because we're currently in the bash shell. Uh, and it's currently highlighted with the asterisk. That means we are currently in window one. Now, if I wanted to switch back into window zero, I would type in control B and zero. All right. And as you can see, the asterisk is now selected here. So just to show you how that works again, if I run something like htop in window zero, and I go to window one, which is control B and one, you can see we have nothing there, but if I switch back to window zero, we still have htop running. So that it actually shows you that it's moving, uh, it's moving uh, around um, as we expected. All right, so if uh, we want to actually rename a particular window, which is quite useful. So let's say in this window, I want to work with Git. I'm gonna be doing all my commits and stuff from this particular window. I would hit control B, and then I would hit the uh, the comma right over here. And then I would rename it to, let's say, git. And I hit enter. That's going to rename it there. And uh, if I wanted to rename the second window, I would just go into window one. And I can hit a control B, rename. And let's say I'm going to be working with Docker in the second window. And I can just hit enter. And now we have a bit of context as to what we're going to be using these windows for. And of course, within these windows, we can create uh, we can create uh, panes and we can do multiple things within a single window. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, now, if we want to actually exit from a window or close down a window, all we need to do is type in exit, right? And that closes that window. And as you can see right now, we only have one window open, which is the get window. All right, so that's fairly simple to understand. Now let's talk about sessions, which is where the true power of TMUX starts to shine through. Right, so the reason I recommend Tmux so much, especially for system administrators, is because it handles uh, it handles the terminals uh, or the uh, your your processes in the form of sessions. So uh, when you start up Tmux, you start up a Tmux session, and uh, the the great thing about sessions is that it preserves your state or whatever process that's actually running within that window or within that session. So. If I was to lose connection to a server that I was connected to uh, through uh, SSH and I was using Tmux and for whatever reason, let's say I had a connection drop, uh, that means if I SSH back into that server and I reloaded or attached my Tmux session, it would I would be exactly where I left it off. And if I was running a process, that process would not be terminated because I actually uh, I lost a connection to that particular terminal. Instead, it continues on in the background. So that's the, the great thing about it. So uh, to detach a session that you're working on, uh, you can do that by typing in control B and D and that will detach it. As you can see, now we're back into um, we're, we're back into our normal terminal and you can see it tells us detach from session zero. Now, uh, when you have Tmux running and you have Tmux sessions running in the background, you can view the sessions running in the background by typing in Tmux LS and that tells you uh, Tmux zero. By the way, we can rename these session. That's quite awesome as well. And then it gives you a summary of how many windows you have open within that Tmux session and when and when it was created. So it gives you a bit of important context as to what you have running within that session. So that's currently running in the background. So if I want to reattach to that sec uh, to that particular session, I'll just hit Tmux and I'll say attach and I specify the target session and then the name of that session. In this case, the name is zero because we haven't specified it and I hit zero and it takes us into that session. So let, let me just show you how this would work. So um, let's say I want to type in a git config and I say global and uh, let's list my global configuration here. All right, so I've outputted some data and I just want to show you that it actually preserves the state. So again, control B and D to detach that and uh, tmux ls you can see that that's currently running if again i specify tmux attach uh, to the uh, to session zero you can see that the exact state is preserved so i hope that makes sense so i'm just going to detach from that session and let's talk about um renaming sessions right so tmux ls you can see it's currently named as zero so if i want to rename this session i would type in tmux uh, rename session and I'll specify uh, the target, which is going to be uh, session zero, and I'll provide the name here. 
So if I wanted to call it git, I hit enter. If I say tmox ls now, you can see uh, it actually tells us the session name is called git. All right, so let's say we wanted to only work with git within that session and we want to create a new session, right? But instead of going directly into that session, we also want to give it a name before we go into the session. So we say tmox and we say new, we specify this is going to be a session. And then we say, uh, let's say I want to work on Docker in that session. So now it's taken us into the Docker uh, session. And again, if we detach and we list the sessions that we have running, you can now see we have Git and the Docker sessions all running concurrently, running their own processes. And we can switch between them as much as we want. And again, as I said, uh, these sessions will be preserved until the system reboots. Uh, so that's something to keep into mind as well uh, or to keep in mind as well. All right, um, so that's essentially how to use tmux sessions and you can create as many as you want. Uh, let's talk about the final uh, step, which is actually deleting sessions or killing sessions that you're not using. So if I say tmux, I can say kill session and I specify the target, which is going to, in this case, let's start, let's start off with the Docker session and I hit enter. If I list this, you can see it, it actually killed the Docker session and we can repeat this for the git session like so and there we are and if we list uh sorry about that uh if we list the current tmux sessions you can see we have none running so uh that was a comprehensive video on all the essentials that you will need to become competent uh and comfortable within tmux uh, i haven't covered uh, anything extensive about it but i'm sure uh, depending on your own workflow uh, you can customize tmux to your own liking and uh, yeah so that's pretty much gonna uh, that's, that's gonna be it for this video guys let me know what you think i would love to hear your feedback in the comment section and uh, i'll be seeing you in the next video peace guys